Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Paul and the Faithfulness of God by N.T. Wright. We're looking at our final, final lesson on Part 4 on History of the Paul Project. We're going to look at the recall triad for pages 1490 to 1520, where we look at uh, Harmadzo and the Eschaton, the coming unity of heaven and earth in the Doxa Glory of God. Let's take a look at Block 1. Historiography from Paul's perspective is about the Father's ongoing Harmadzo union of heaven and earth, beginning with a new understanding of the temple as being the ecclesia. It is also an ongoing union that manifests a return of the docks of glory to God's true people. And this ongoing union is for Paul a process of reconciliation of necessity, the ongoing harmadzo takes place through the proclamation of the gospel for Paul. It is necessary for Paul to proclaim the gospel of Christ. On um, block two, harmadzo union in history takes place through the son's truth of the word of reconciliation. First of all, reconciliation is in Christ and Christos. The word of reconciliation has as its eschatological goal to create koinonia fellowship within the one true family of God, without privilege, without distinction. The word of reconciliation is an empowering of the agiral raising up of all creation under reunion with God the Father through Christ. And in a concrete way, Harmazo is actualized through Mamatai, becoming imitators of Christ. We are to become Mamatai. So we've got the... Uh, Father's ongoing union of heaven and earth, the Son's word of reconciliation, and that leads us to the Spirit, block three, the Harmazo union of heaven and earth through the word of reconciliation takes place eschatologically in the realm of spirit and the sovereign ingathering of spirit. Starting with the ministry of manifesting the gospel through praxis and proclamation out of the church as a sign marker of the kingdom. Praxis ministry has as its task new creation, says Paul, through praxis ministry and proclamation out of the church. There's the outward turn toward others in agape self-giving. No longer does Paul take up the Pharisee privilege in turning inward and, and shunning others as unclean. Now the church turns outward in agape self-giving, or in a kenosis self-emptying. For Paul, Harmazo union and its end gathering takes place through renewal of mind, put on the mind of Christ, he says again and again. The eschaton will be a Harmazo unto doxa glory, where all the earth is the Lord's in all of its fullness. And it is prefigured in the fellowship of the church and the unity of the church. The prefigurement of the coming union of heaven and earth is the ongoing eschatological union and koinonia fellowship of the church. So we have all three working together here. We have the Father in block one, bringing about the union of heaven and earth. Then we have the Son, block two. This union is brought about through the word of reconciliation in Christ. He is the rhema voice of the eternal logos. He is the word but he's the word as the rhema, the spoken word. He spoke creation into existence. Jesus speaks new creation into existence. He is the rhema. And then block three, the realm of spirit. The eschaton is unfolding in the realm of the spirit. It's moving toward new creation through an ingathering process where all of creation is being ingathered into Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will be curious Lord over all of creation, period. And so we have a, a triune summary and a triune encapsulated look at this final lesson on Harmazo, unification of heaven and earth, as defining the eschaton, the coming parousia. But now we'll take a look at our four-point focus. Now in the four-point focus, we get our little snapshot here. For Paul, history is headed toward full union of heaven and earth in the full doxa glory of God. 
And the church is to prefigure that eschatological goal of unification through its unifying koinonia fellowship in three moments. So what's the first thing it does? The church is to proclaim the gospel of reconciliation. UN Galizzo Catalasso. The church is to proclaim the gospel of reconciliation. UN Galizzo Catalasso. Second, the church is to imitate Christ by practicing the fellowship of the one true family of God. Mamatai Christu. Become imitators of Christ. Mamatai Christu. Third, the church is to present itself in a radical new way of thinking concerning culture, concerning acceptance. The church is to practice agape self-giving, which is what? Putting on the new mind of Christ. It is anachinosis to nous, renewal of mind. Anachinosis to nous, anachinosis to nous, renewal of mind. The church is to take up euangelizo, catalasso, mematai Christu, and anachinosis to nous. Those three steps, those three moments, encapsulate the closing teaching by Paul and Professor Wright on the church, the role of the church in unity, unification, bringing heaven and earth together to form the true kingdom of God in the Son, Jesus Christ. So I'll say it again. This is the final, final lesson. There's no more after this. We're done. We've concluded on page 1520. We have concluded. But I will say, in eight months, we have looked at the birth of the gospel in the letter to the Galatians. We have looked at the birth of eschatology as a doctrine in Thessalonians 1 and 2. We have looked at the consummate New Testament theology of Paul in the letter to the Ephesians. And now we have looked at a tremendous teaching on Paul by Professor N.T. Wright all the way through all four parts, which is really four volumes in one, of God and the faithfulness, Paul and the faithfulness of Christ. All four, four books in one. We went through all four parts, concluding with history today. So in eight months, we have covered all three missionary journeys and the Paul Project by N.T. Wright. That's going to wrap up... Uh, this study, and uh, of course, we'll, we'll move on to something new, but this will close out our study um, by N.T. Wright.